Good morning and look at all the chaos happening around the elephant carcass this morning. We've got at least 10 or 11 hyenas chasing around vultures, vultures and even blackback jackal scuttling in and around the carcass. My name is Brent Neosmith. I have Dangerous Dave, the dimpled dish on camera. Let's get back to the action. So at the moment, only hyenas, vultures and jackal here. And uh, not all the hyenas at the carcass, they, they're actually all spread out all over the place. And I've just lost sight of the little blackback jackals that were nipping in and out. The hyenas have been chasing them. You can just see vultures, hyenas all over the place. And this is always going to be one of those very interesting sightings. Now remember, if you have any questions for us, hashtag Safari Live on Twitter, or you can just pop your questions on the feed below. <laughs> Where is that little jackal? I think he's coming back. Where is the jackal? All the hyenas charging in to chase the vultures. Off they go, chasing vultures all over the place. This isn't this absolutely incredible. I still can't see the jackals. There's just so much going on. And while we're going to sit right here, we're not going to move a muscle. In the meantime, let's go see what Tristan's plans are for the morning. Well, you can see all apologies for that, that there's um, a bit of gremlins going on. You can see the Juma vehicle has arrived as well and the guests are enjoying the sighting look at that hyena and i always find it really funny when the hyenas try to chase the vultures and that's probably because they've just arrived so in a day or two the hyenas with their big fat bellies won't really bother wasting their time chasing the vultures nearly as aggressively as they are at the moment You can see that's probably it looks like a piece of stomach that the hyenas have managed to drag out of the elephant. And the vultures are all trying to steal scraps, whatever the hyenas drop. As I said, the, the, the bigger predators, hyenas and lions, are very, very important when it comes to opening up this carcass for scavengers like vultures. Now, as you can see, the hyenas are quite nervous. They're keeping an eye out all over the place, uh, making sure that there are no big predators around. And Una was asking that. Well, Una, the fact is that a carcass like this, all these vultures flapping and moving around, if it is spotted by a lion, it will bring the lions charging in. So that is the reason the hyenas are keeping a watchful eye out. So I say, I've seen about 10 <laughs> oh, very funny. Still chasing vultures. Now, they've been very quiet about this, and uh, there's an important reason for that. And hyenas are, are quite smart, so they know if they start making noise and whooping and cackling and fighting over this carcass, what will happen is it will bring in. Uh, animals like lions or possibly even a rival hyena clan so they're being very quiet eating as much as they can without making as little noise as possible now keep a look out for cape vultures amongst the white backs You can see the tree above the carcass is littered with vultures. And so are most of the trees all around. Now, of course, the sun is about to come up to the east. And someone who is in the east already looking for that magnificent male leopard, Tingana, is Taylor. 
Well, you can see the sun has popped up over the eastern horizon. There is absolute pandemonium still carrying on in the carcass. And we've got right next to the carcass one, two, three, four, five hyenas. And vultures trying to sneak in every time the hyenas sort of leave a little bit to the left. There we go. You see them coming in. And let's see how long it takes for the hyenas to chase them. As I said, as, as, it, as we progress here, and there's less and less meat, well, and as the hyenas get more and more full, uh, they'll take less notice of the vultures and uh, sort of just carry on. Now, I've seen hyenas catch vultures before, and that's what Jacqueline's asking. Uh, but I, they've never killed them. They normally let go once they've got it. The only animal I've actually seen catch and kill a vulture but not eat it is a, is a lioness. Uh, for some reason, that lioness really had a thing uh, against vultures. You can see that light starting to shine. Look at the vultures taking any opportunity. And you can see that one vulture feeding on the eye. Or what's left of the eye. The eye would have been one of the first things that the vultures got hold of yesterday. So what you're looking for, for with cape vultures is you're looking for a yellow eye rather than a dark eye. That's a hooded vulture there. So we've got two vulture species confirmed, white-backed and hooded. So the cape vultures are normally a little bit lighter in coloration. Uh, and they have a yellow eye and a bit bigger. So far, I actually haven't seen any capes. I saw some yesterday. No, I'm still white backs. Another hyena coming in from the left. Well, not looking quite as fat as the others. Might have been a late arrival or not. No, it looks fine. It looks like it's been here for a while. And you can see that beautiful morning light creeping through, illuminating the tops of the grasses. Hoping that lions do see this, and the vultures descending. Oh, there's lots of hyenas coming in. I think that they, some of them, when we arrived, there were lots of hyenas all around, but we couldn't see exactly all of them. Hi, Daniel. Daniel's asking, are these hyenas from the Juma clan? I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure they are. I'm just trying to see if any individuals I recognise are outright, but I'm I'm 99.9% .9 sure they are definitely from the Juma clan. Let's have a close look at that one there that's walking in. Pretty sure that's a big belly, isn't that one? I've actually seen hyenas, I mean, the vultures bite hyenas back as well. I'm sorry. They seem to have a, a, a semi sort of reasonable sort of a understanding between each other on these big carcasses. Now, as I said, I'm pretty sure I recognize that hyena there with that chip out of the ear. Well, it's in the middle of the elephant's legs there. But, there we go, I'm pretty sure I recognize that hyena. But maybe some of you guys can confirm uh, whether this is definitely the Juma clan or not. Let me know, hashtag Safari Live. I'm 99.9% .9 sure. I'm still looking for the first Cape Vulture of the morning. Okay. Tristan and I were chatting yesterday um, and there was an Egyptian vulture seen in the Kruger to the south. Chase those vultures to the south of Chokwan. And uh, 
an elephant carcass is something that might bring in a rare vulture species like that. I think by the, oh, let's go to these vultures in front. They've got a piece of meat, a little one, and scrabbling over it. And the hyena's coming to take it back. Um, and we should get, I'm surprised we haven't got any white backs, I mean, not white backs, they're leopard faces yet. Uh, they're not as common here as they are in the Mara, for example. But a big carcass like this should bring in almost all the vulture species we get. So we should see uh, what well, we've got white backed and hooded. And I saw a cape yesterday. I'm just trying to find a cape now this morning. Uh, and white headed. Uh, and and if we're lucky, that well, the lapid faced, I'm pretty sure, should arrive. And if we're very lucky, that very rare Egyptian vulture might arrive. Tristan, I, yeah, we, we, we were discussing the possibility of that yesterday. I'm just checking all the vultures. Now, the reason we, we're seeing more vultures on Juma and in the Sabi Sands in general and at the moment is due to the fact that there, uh, there used to be things called vulture restaurants, uh, particularly around Hoodsprate. There were two prominent ones that used to feed the vultures twice a week. And uh, those were very important sort of, sort of during the, the, the 80s and early 90s when the majority of the areas around there were cattle farms. Um, and so what happened is if lions or whatnot killed, well, that hyena's got a big piece, um, killed cattle or whatnot, the carcasses were often poisoned, so the vultures, uh, just go to that hyena is carrying, what, let me see what it's carrying, I think it's carrying, it, I think it's carrying oh, a piece of stomach, and off it goes, now hyenas will go stash that, um, might stash it in a pan, where other hyenas might not be able to smell it, now, so as I was saying about the vultures, um, so what was happening is that the majority of those vultures just go, go to the hyenas. Just looking, okay. The one carrying the meat is more dominant than the other one, otherwise it would have just taken it for good measure. So uh, so what happens now is uh, that the Pumalanga Parks Board have done a very good thing by closing down those vulture restaurants because the area is now com almost completely under wildlife game farms and, 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 and wildlife reserves. So what that means is while the vulture restaurants were, were operating, the vultures weren't doing their job because they were just getting free meals from, from, from the vulture restaurants. So uh, a lot of the Cape vultures and stuff like that that live up in the mountains uh, in the Drakensberg above the low felt were just flying twice a week to the two different spots they were being fed. And uh, now that the permits for those vulture restaurants have been revoked, we're starting to see these vultures spread f a lot further, um, and they're doing their job again. So yeah, I'm hoping we'll get a good couple, or maybe 150 or so vultures on this carcass by the end. I'd say there's easy, or maybe even 200 vultures. I'd say there's probably easily 100 now. Oh, look at them coming in. There's something's changed. They've seen a gap. They're charging in the vultures. Now, let's see how long the hyenas accept this behavior for. And it's quite difficult for the hyenas when there's that many vultures coming, charging in. There we go. It's like an unstoppable army, an absolute sea of feathers and beaks. There's a little vulture, slight vulture argument happening on the tusk there. See, now, commotion like that, when they chase the vultures, send them flapping up into the air, is often what will maybe attract the lions.
No, I'm not 100 percent sure, uh, Lisa. Lisa's asking how far away are the closest lines. I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, as far as I know, Avokas are somewhere just to the north of uh, Buffalo's a cut line, but quite far in the west. And uh, then Sticks Pride, I would think, to be the closest. They were on Chitwa Chitwa apparently yesterday. So just over that ridge in the distance, but whether they spotted the vultures. It was quite cool yesterday, so they might not have spotted the vultures dropping, but today I think it's going to be a scorcher and clear, so the vultures, will be more and more vultures descending on this position. And also, the smellier the carcass gets, the further that smell permeates, We're going to sit right here to see what happens next between the hyenas and vultures and see if anything else arrives on the scene. While we do that, let's go see how Tristan's Shadulu tracking is going. Um, as I say, it sort of goes in and well, the, 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 the action <laughs> ebbs and flows here at the elephant carcass. At the moment, we're going through a bit more of a quiet time. The hyenas aren't as worried about chasing the vultures as they were a little bit earlier. But, of course, that could change in a split second like that. There we go. That was a very hot-hearted chase, though. Now, hyenas are incredibly efficient animals. And Marigold is asking about the digestive abilities of a hyena how much can they digest um they can eat up to about 10 kilograms uh, in a single sitting but they the digestive system works very very fast so they're able to to process that quite quickly now a hyena unlike lions will store food so like a leopard leopard will take it to kill up a tree to eat at leisure see there we go here's a hyena that looks like the hyena that disappeared carrying some meat a bit earlier is now back so hyenas will actually take pieces of meat and they'll normally hide them in water so other animals or other hyenas and a lion and leopard can't smell look there's one in the distance taking a piece of meat down there Dad. somewhere behind there we go you see that one there there you go that hyena looks like she's off with a piece of meat or he's off with a piece of meat and they'll go find a convenient puddle or pan and they'll, they'll actually store the meat in there. They'll cache it for later. So if what's happening, I'm seeing at the moment, is quite a lot of these hyenas are very full. They've been feeding all night. So they're taking away chunks to store for later. Now, this practice is, is more common uh, in sort of a middle to lower ranking hyenas. Uh, and... Uh, it's actually very, there's some very interesting studies on it that the lower ranking you are, the smarter you become. And that's to avoid confrontation with the, the, the aggressive dominant animals in the clan. So stashing food, um, which, is a, which is a very big one, and, and different ways of avoiding conflict with uh, other higher ranking individuals. So it is, it is, it is absolutely fascinating how, you know, social structure and hierarchy uh, but it's not, oh, there you go. <laughs> it's not to say higher ranking animals um, on a carcass like this, they would almost certainly also stash. Now, they worried that it possibly lions or, or lions would come and take the carcass from them. So, there's a little hyena argument there. Still very quiet compared to what we've, we've seen with hyenas normally. Normally it's very loud when they're fighting, but as I say, they're trying to keep... Oh, is that the first Cape Vulture? It looked quite light. Look for the yellow eye, Dave. No, I'm just a light, very light white-backed. Yeah, the vultures squabbling. Ah. 
any gap that the hyenas give them, the vultures will take. Okay, the vultures. So there's only one hyena left, and look how the vultures are just dropping en masse. So there's so much meat on an elephant carcass that even I think the whole Juma clan would struggle to finish it in a single sitting. So Cassandra is wondering, will they ever leave meat on a carcass? Not intentionally. So hyenas might move off to go stash meat somewhere and then come back again. Uh, lions, sometimes if they're really full, will leave something like an elephant carcass. While the hyenas have all moved off carrying pieces of meat, uh, I'm waiting for them to come charging back because the moment the hyenas moved off, the vultures descended. Look at that. Oh, there's a hyena running at high speed. But running away rather than running toward the carcass. I'm not sure if it's being chased by another hyena or something more sinister is about. But there be lions in the area. I don't think so. I think it was. Here we go. See, there's the hyena running. Oh, Davy. Dave's, Dave's still waking up. He hasn't had enough coffee this morning. Hey, Davy. <laughs> I think it could be just running from another another hyena. I'll just have a quick look behind me. As I said earlier, there was a jackal around, and James is, says, where, does it, where did it go? I don't know, James. The glass is very long, unfortunately. So I'm sure it's still around. It might have found a little scrap somewhere um, and disappeared with that, but uh, in this long grass, it is quite difficult to see. Now, let's have a look. Let's get in a bit tighter. Darby, let's see if we can find any cape vultures now. No, not yet. Maybe the Cape Vultures are late risers. Uh, the sound of the screeching vultures is, is always quite quite impressive. And that is a jack jack jack. And there's always a lot of fighting amongst them at the carcass. Now and cape vultures would normally be dominant over the white backed. So, Selena is asking, how do the vultures find the carcass? Is it purely from smell? It's not at all from smell, it's purely from sight. Uh, they are able to spot a, a carcass from up to 10 kilometers uh, and they can see from very, very high up in the air. So they are, have incredible eyesight and one of the, the threats to vultures is um, the muti trade, which is basically means the, the, the medicine trade um, in certain African cultures. Uh, a soup of vultures' eyes will let you see into the future. So sometimes vultures are targeted uh, with uh, poisoning. It's just this one now, that one there. Oh, I'm turning it. No, it's a white back. Just a pale one. And you see the little hooded vultures in front there. I'm surprised we haven't seen a cape yet. So as I said, there were a few of them around yesterday evening. But this morning, on the carcass itself, I mean, we haven't seen any cape vultures yet. Um, 
waiting patiently for the hyenas to come charging back in. Chase all the vultures. As you can see, the vultures are dominating the carcass at the moment, but First Lady is asking about other birds, other predatory birds, would they feed on a carcass like this? Yes, not all of them. Uh, tawny eagles and battaliers, most definitely. Uh, occasionally you'll see kites, well, they're not around at the moment, but yellow billed kites, black kites will also uh, feed off a carcass like this. Um, the other predatory birds, if they find it first, before the vultures, then maybe. But with this many vultures around, it's only really tawny eagles and battaliers that will uh, risk the the chance of having an argument with the vultures but even now this many vultures you might find the battaliers and the tawny eagles will stay far away as well lots of squabbling going on there looks like they got a piece out of the stomach now those ones are fighting to try to get into the hole they're pushing each other out of the way So we are going to have our friends on Facebook join us for a short while. So I am going to be quiet for a few seconds while the final control preps that. Good morning and welcome to the Savi Sands Game Reserve in South Africa. My name is Brent Leo Smith. I have my good friend David on camera and we are bringing you this 100% live. So if you have any questions or comments, just pop them on the feed below. Now we've been following this elephant now for two days. Uh, it died yesterday morning. We saw him when he was injured. It was killed by another elephant. A big elephant bull stabbed him with his tusk and that is what killed this elephant. Now the scavengers are here. So we've got lots of vultures, probably 60 to 70 vultures currently, uh, all on this elephant carcass. There were hyenas running around, but they've just moved off, which makes me think something could be afoot. Now, I think they've just, they should be coming back shortly, and they will probably chase those vultures off the carcass. Now, an elephant carcass will provide a huge amount of food to a huge amount of animals over the next week or so. As I said, there are probably between 70 and 100 vultures currently on this carcass. Uh, that's what Robin was asking. So there are lots of vultures. Oh, there's a little battle going on. Now there can be lots of fighting. So the only area of that elephant that's been opened up um, by the tusk wound is under the, the, the right sort of armpit. And then the hyenas have opened up the stomach. And that's where the vultures are feeding at the moment. And there's quite a lot of fighting for that top position. Here we go, there's a vulture eating in the eye socket. The eye is one of the first things to go on a big carcass like an elephant. Because the vultures, even with their powerful bills, are unable to open up the skin properly. So they need the hyenas and lions and other big predators to do it for them. Isn't that incredible? Now, it's still quite cool at the moment, but the vultures flying in from two, from far and wide, and uh, maybe attract the lions a little bit later. Now, as you can see, the tusks are still in the elephant, and D is worried that poachers might be loitering around this elephant. Uh, not where we are, D. It's uh, almost impossible for a poacher to get this deep into the reserve we have permanent anti-poaching patrols and the fact that we are out on game drive every day and uh, people are out here at night on night drives so the wardens will remove those tusks at some point but at the moment the tusks are very safe just where they are now you can hear there's a huge amount of noise as the vultures battle over the carcass and Dina is asking, will that attract lions? Dina, yes, it will. If there are lions close enough to hear it, that will most definitely attract the lions. 
and I'm hoping the lions are on their way. Now, the lions, I'm not sure where the lions are. We've got quite a lot of lions, but they're quite spread out. So they'd have to be quite close to hear the vulture uh, squabbles over the carcass, but they've got a better chance of seeing the vultures flying down and dropping, which might bring them in. So you never know when the lions might arrive. Oh, big fight. Now, Cindy is asking, can vultures access the brain by going through the eye socket? No, they can't, Cindy. Uh, an elephant brain is actually one of the few animals that the, the scavengers can't get to. So nature has provided a very special type of creature that feeds off the elephant's brain. Um, and, and other big animals like buffalo and rhino, there is a species of carrion beetle uh, that specializes in the brains of big animals. So it will burrow through the eye socket, um, nasal passages, uh, and get through into the brain and eat the brain. So, Jackie is asking which animal opened and opened this carcass up for the vultures. So, initially there was a big wound from the tusk of the big male elephant that killed this elephant. That opened up a little bit, but the hyenas last night have opened up far more along the stomach. They even popped the stomach uh, when we were here yesterday evening I'm still searching around looking for the hyenas to be coming back but it doesn't look like they are at the moment uh, what happens is I think the hyenas are all so full they've been eating here all night they've got big fat tummies and they're probably sleeping not too far off As I said a little bit earlier, that what will attract the other predators most likely is the vultures circling and dropping down to the food. So Tyler was wondering about that. Yes, uh, the vultures will attract other predators to this carcass. I'm just keeping quiet so you can hear the noise of those vultures squabbling. Now there's, of course, competition constantly over food. Oh, there we go. And Dr. Rob was wondering, do they ever hurt each other? Yes, they do, Dr. Rob. Nothing serious. They will nip and peck at each other. You can see there's always a battle going on. And quite often they also, what they do is when they fight, they'll open their wings out wide, at their, just like that, <laughs> and try to look more impressive. And not only will they peck, they will also kick. But it's very seldom that they ever do serious damage to each other. So we're going to sit right here with this carcass to see what happens next. Lions could come in, hyena could come in, a leopard might even take advantage of a free meal. So keep a lookout for the go live notifications. And also uh, remember you can join us for six hours a day, every day on YouTube. Just type on Safari Live. And remember, this is all live, unscripted, happening right now at this very moment. So from all of us here, hopefully we'll see you a little later. Okay, so it's quite strange. Though. I think the hyenas are just so full that they've gone to stash bits of meat around and uh, maybe have a snooze, but I think they will be back during the morning. But as I say, I am hoping that the vulture activity might bring in a lion or a leopard.
And I have seen leopard feeding off elephant carcasses before in Botswana. You show him. You show him. Bite, bite, bite. Peck, peck, peck. Fight, fight, fight. Oh, tackled. That actually... Almost looks like that could be just no, the vulture with its wings open. Is that a juvenile cape? So what we're looking for, oh, it's impossible once it's down in there. Uh, it's going to be very difficult to tell now. Uh, Jeff, uh, vultures are not strictly scavengers. I'd say 99% of their food is scavenged. However, if there is nothing to scavenge, they have been recorded hunting small mammals before. I'm surprised the vultures are getting any anything out of that eye socket. And they're still, still sort of battling through there. sinew more than anything else but it is a spot that doesn't seem to have too much competition around it at the moment so cape vultures oh there we go is that? no it's just a juvenile whiteback uh, cape vultures uh, the, the juveniles are quite difficult to tell apart from whiteback vultures although they do not have that prominent white back uh, their heads are generally or their necks sorry are longer and their heads are larger and you will see they'll be more dominant around the carcass beating up um, on the white back vultures and as I say at the moment it's a bit difficult to say who's who in the vulture zoo see that one there I think is a juvenile cape Let's chat, let's chat again. I think that's a white, just a light colored white back there. Look at that bloody head on the vulture. Hmm. Oh, did that look like a light eye to you there, Dave? It looked a bit light. Huh? I just want to wait for this vulture to pop its head up again. Now, chatting about blood, there, there's plenty of blood, but what's happening is that blood is pooling inside the uh, sort of ribcage and stomach, content, uh, stomach area of that elephant. Uh, animals like the hyenas will actually drink it up, uh, but there is still plenty of blood, but it will be leaking out, out of the stomach, out of the stomach cavity, onto the grass and stuff like that. And um, with a big carcass like this, as I say, it's... it's uh, a lot of that blood's going to be sitting right down on the on on the right hand side where the elephants uh, the way the elephant's lying. So you don't really. And now we what nearly a full 24 hours since this Eddie died. Um, so a lot of that blood would have clotted already. So it's not going to be gushing out like it would if the elephant was fresh. and screams. There we go, Cape Vulture. The first really confirmed adult Cape Vulture. You can see the lighter coloured eye.
Okay, well, I'm going to wait to see if any other predators arrive at this carcass. Uh, let's go across to Tristan, who's still hunting Shadoo. Uh, it's all calmed down a little bit here. And no sign of any other predators. The hyenas have all moved off. It's just the vultures around. So uh, I'm trying to decide what to do. So I think I'm just going to make it easy and let you guys decide for me. Should I go do a quick patrol around to see if there's anything heading towards these vultures maybe head down towards cheetah cut line do a loop and come back or should we stay hashtag safari live it's up to you guys should we go see if there's anything coming towards this area or should we uh, just wait it out with the vultures And even the vultures are calming down. Quite a lot of them have got full crops. Oh, looks like Cape Vulture coming in, Dave. Looks like it's... No, it's not. So a very pale white bat vulture flying in. Okay. Um, so apart from the vultures, the hyenas, the lions, leopard, all the other stuff, there's a lot of different insects that will feed... On the carcass, there's the carrion beetles. There's a specialist beetles that go right into the skull um, of and to the sinews of a big carcass like this. But the insect that eats the most flesh, and that's what First Lady was wondering, is uh, is of course fly larvae. Maggots will eat the flesh. And I think by the end of today, if we have a closer look in this carcass, there are going to be hundreds of thousands of maggots, especially if it gets hot today. Seem to be, as I said, it seems to be calming down for now. Uh, no hyenas around. I wonder where that jackal disappeared to that was here first thing in the morning. You'd think now that the hyenas had moved off and um, it would come back. What probably happened is it managed to steal a large enough piece of meat and it has disappeared off to eat it at its leisure. But they should be back at some point during the day. You can see not too much pandemonium at the moment. There's only very limited space for the vultures to be able to feed. But if we have a look, there's quite a lot of vultures sitting around. And that's because at the moment their crops are full. So they're just sitting around digesting. And as soon as they get hungry again, they'll be back in battling for that carcass. Just hear that squabbling between the vultures. It, it's a sort of never-ending sound around a big carcass like this. Yeah, that looks like a... Uh, to the left a little bit, please, Dad. There we go. That looks like a juvenile cape there. And see lacking the white back uh, juvenile capes are quite dark and the longer neck and bigger head now it sounds like the lions were chasing buffalo all over the place last night and Tristan has found one of the survivors well we've made our way back towards the carcass Still no sign of the hyenas. I think they're, they're off sleeping, not too far off, probably sleeping off an elephant meat. 
overload. But there's still lots of vultures here. And these are all vultures that we have been here since yesterday. And uh, I don't think there are any new ones just yet. But as the day warms and the vultures spot the carcass and actually spot other vultures, I think we could see a few more vultures here this evening. Hoppity hoppity hop. So far, just white backs, hoodeds, and the odd cape. Now you can see there's a lot of white on the carcass there. Uh, Daryl is asking, why do they defecate where they eat? Well, because they're vultures. Uh, lions and hyenas also do the same. Uh, they're not too worried about hygiene. They have incredible immunities uh, to most disease, and that's what makes them such an important creature in the ecosystem. As they'll clean up rotting carcasses uh, to prevent the spread of disease in the African bush. That's why they're such an integral part of the ecosystem. They also just are absolutely fascinating birds. And I said, I'm hoping that we get a few more species than we presently have on the carcass. Um, White-headed, hopefully, and uh, lapid-faced, but it would be very, very exciting if that Egyptian vulture did come from Kruger. Now, the distance isn't that bad for, 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 a, for a vulture to cover. Cape vultures can actually cover a couple of hundred kilometers from their nesting sites in search of food. Ah, well, there's no hyenas around here, but it seems like Tristan has found one. Well, I wonder if that hyena was one of the hyenas that was here earlier in the morning and that has now moved off to maybe go get a drink or uh, a stashed food somewhere close by. Or oh, I'm not exactly sure where Tristan is, but it's possible. As I say, I think quite a few of the hyenas, after stashing uh, some elephant meat, would have then... Will, will, sorry, will now be relaxing uh, in the shade somewhere, digesting all that meat. And as soon as that meat's digested, I'll uh, probably move back towards this carcass, but mm, when it's a bit cooler in the afternoon. Now, I know some of you find this as a very disturbing sight, but... One must remember, this happens regularly out here. It's uncommon for an elephant bull to kill another elephant, but it, 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 it well, uncommon, but not rare. So it does happen, and uh, there's been some incredible cases of it uh, in, in the Greater Kruger and in the Kruger itself. One of the more spectacular ones is the skull is housed at the Elephant Museum, uh, at the Tiber, there is a the skull of an elephant that was killed by another elephant, and uh, the actual piece of the tusk broke off inside its brain. So you've got this big hole in its skull, as well as a piece of the tusk in the skull. So, as I said, it does happen. It, it, it is just one of those things. Some noises of the vultures always uh, always entertain me. So as I said, I, I'm pretty sure that Jack managed to steal something earlier this morning and then went to eat it in relative comfort and safety away from uh, the carcass. But now, 
The jackal is back. <laughs> Scrapping with the vultures. Oh, it's, um, it looks like it's going in to try to get uh, into the mouth. Uh, probably not a good plan. Uh, sorry, probably a very good plan. Uh, it could probably get to the tongue and uh, get quite a bit of meat out of there without having to go into that area where the vultures have are, are busy fighting uh, where the hyenas have opened up the carcass. See, he's getting right into the mouth there. I said probably trying to go for the tongue. I wonder if oh sorry guys my game drive radio just got a bit loud and just turned it down. Daisy is asking, is that a black back jackal? Indeed it is a Daisy. Uh, we do get two species of jackal here, the black back jackal and the side striped jackal. You're less likely to see a side striped jackal on a carcass like this. Uh, they tend to have a, a far more varied and omnivorous diet, where there is the black back jackals have a far more carnivorous diet. Oh, hyena back as well. I wonder if this is the one that Tristan had a little bit earlier. Why don't you guys let me know, is it the same hyena? That's, that's why I say it's a, we seem to have got back at just the right time. The jackal's back, a single hyena's back. Now let's see if the hyena's going to cause some trouble. See the jackal spotted the hyena now. Is the hyena going to chase the jackal off? Now the jackals are of course much quicker than the hyenas. Now, is the hyena going to chase all the vultures off next? The wall of vultures in front of the poor hyena. Now, we don't see jackal that often at the moment, and Conrad is asking, where do they hide? They're around. Uh, so, it was about two years ago, two and a half years ago, there was an outbreak of rabies in this area. So, the jackal population plummeted. A lot of them had to be destroyed uh, or, or died from rabies. So, their, pop, their, their numbers are slowly building back up. But also, at this time of the year, when the grass is quite long, uh, we don't see them nearly as often as well. Uh, jackal didn't run off too far. I'm sure it was around there somewhere still. You see where he went? Yeah. There, there he is. Now, normally they can be quite territorial and they live in pairs, but on a carcass like this, we might even see multiple pairs of jackal uh, if there are numbers around. As I said, as that rabies outbreak a couple of years ago really, really took a big dent out of the jackal population in the low fault. Quite a nervous hyena checking around, not chasing off all the vultures. Maybe it doesn't want to disturb them because if the vultures all flap off in a big fuss, it's likely to possibly attract other predators. Now we've noticed there, there's a constant fighting between the vultures, cheeky. He's asking about the, the pecking order that, and what, literally it is a pecking order, they'll peck each other. There we go, just like that. So yes, there is a pecking order. 
uh, based on size. So with the vulture species we currently have here, Cape vulture are top of the pecking order, followed by white back, and then lastly the little hooded. But oh, if, our, if the leopard faces arrive, the pecking order will change. Leopard face will become one, Cape two, white back three, hooded four. And also if the white-headed vultures come in, uh, they sort of sit around the similar area to the Cape Vulture in terms of the pecking order. Well, you don't see too many dead vultures out here. Daryl's asking, would a vulture eat another vulture? I think it would. I'm not sure. I've never seen it happen before. I've seen hyenas eat a dead vulture, but I, I've never seen a vulture eating a dead vulture. But they are opportunistic scavengers, so I think if they were the first on the scene, they, they probably would. A very tolerant hyena. I say it's going to be very interesting uh, this evening to see what's around, if there are a lot more hyenas, whether the, the lions, the sticks pride, or the vokers, or whatnot, notice these vultures dropping down and make their way here. That hyena, even though it's not chasing the vultures, it is dominating the main opening, and you can't, from the looks of things, oh, peck, peck, peck. There's not a lot of vulture feeding activity at the moment while that hyena is sort of in prime spot. Okay, well, hopefully some more stuff rolls in, but at the moment, Taylor's got a small sounder of swine. Well, we're still here, and you can see where the jackal was feeding. One of the vultures is now tucking in there, or two of them are trying to. Uh, the hyenas still dominating the main opening around the stomach that was opened by the hyenas overnight. But more vultures, as you can see, are arriving. Slowly but surely incoming, Dave. Ending gear is out. Here they come. Ooh, that one's going to land in the tree. That one's going to land on the ground. So that type of movement can be seen by animals like lions from a long way off. And leopard and other hyenas. So it's going to be very interesting to see what else is going to arrive around this carcass over the next few days. Squawk! Almost like they're complaining at the hyena. Go away! Ruining our day. Hi, Cindy. Cindy's wondering: Will the scavengers eat the skin? Uh, in a lot of cases, yes. However, a lot of this elephant skin will be too thick, even for the tough jaws of the spotted hyena. So, in a lot of cases, scavengers will eat skin. Um, of, of, of the different animals, but in this case, I think the skin is probably just a bit too tough. They'll eat the softer bits of skin um, that are around the stomach area, the groin, uh, and the anus, but I think the majority of that skin is too tough. Now, you'll often find dried bits of elephant skin even years after an elephant has died. So that skin becomes very coarse. Uh, strangely enough, uh, certain animals, uh, like brine hyenas, will actually feed off um, very old skin. Uh, of, uh, I've seen them feed off elephant skin before, but um, of, of lots of different things. So it is possible that certain animals will definitely take advantage um, of that skin, but it is once it's dry and whatnot, there's very little nutritional value. 
So only a few certain species are able to get nutri nutrients out of a dried elephant skin. See now as the sun comes out and the day heats up, more and more vultures will be taking off from their evening roosts and starting to sort of get get going, start catching those thermals, flying high, and it shouldn't take too long for them to find this carcass. Okay, so let me just find Oh that's how's that Dev? It's quite bright. Okay, so there's the dam. Uh, dam Cam Dam, Vertilla Dam. And uh, if we go down south to Twin Dams, Twin Dams is directly in front of us. We are about there. So just to the west of Twin Dams, just to the west of that little road in the block here. So quite close to the, the southern boundary, there's Gowrie Main running along there. So just probably uh, 150, 200 meters uh, to the north of Gauri Main and 100 meters to the west of Twin Dams. And more vultures coming in. Lots just dropping from the sky. And that's what uh, the big cats will look for. Just vultures dropping from uh, high and then just coming down. Oh, lots of them coming in now. So as it gets warmer, we're going to get more and more vultures. There we go. Here comes one undercarriage out. Landing gear. Well, that's a pretty successful landing. Sometimes you can watch vultures land. It can be absolutely hilarious. And they make a duff, a duff up of their landing. And they sort of bundle into each other or bundle into the carcass or nearly fall out of a tree. Next one coming in. Well, these guys have got uh, are pretty good at the landing so far. It's, especially if it's a it's a vulture that's just spotted the carcass for a first time, uh, they can come in very hot. There's another one coming in, Dev. Just dropping in at a. A rate of knots, literally, because they are coming in at knots. Just having a quick look up into the sky, see if I can see any more. Now we've watched the vultures feeding off the area where the elephant's right eye was. And our Lara Moore is asking, what are they tugging at in that area? Well, I think mostly now it's it's just pieces of sinew. Um, um, most of the eye, the eye would have been one of the first things gone. So they're just tugging at all the, the meat around the eye, um, around there. And most of that's quite sinuous, as you can see. They struggle at pulling at it. And they're getting very little reward for quite a lot of effort That is an excellent question from Lauren. Will we be allowed to keep the elephant skull for the tent? I'm afraid I can't answer you, Lauren. I'm not sure. Um, so what normally happens if the Sabi Sands come to remove the tusks, often they'll remove the whole head. Uh, it is very difficult to cut out elephant tusks. Um, they'll often, what will often happen is the head will be completely removed. Uh, the skull will be buried in an undisclosed location and left for a couple of months and uh, then the tusks will then it will be dug out and the tusks will be removed so i don't know is the answer to your question hopefully but it'll be a while before you want to be anywhere near that elephant skull because you got to remember the brains are busy liquefying inside that elephant skull 
and brains are particularly smelly. Now, as I said, there's quite a lot of vultures around. Mrs. Zera is asking for a head count. Uh, there's more arriving every minutes. I'd say there were between 70 and 100 when I arrived this morning, probably pushing 120, 130 now, as uh, the next sort of load are about to drop down. You can just see them all around. I think by this evening there could be close on 200, maybe even a few more. Okay, well, we're going to watch the vultures dropping in, and who knows, maybe something else will brush in shortly. But till then, let's send you back across to Tristan, who's checking around Gallego Pan. Well, it's still the same, the same culprits here at the elephant carcass, the single hyena, the jackal darting around. We've just lost sight of it now, and uh, the three vulture species. Now, there's that old wives' tale that vultures will circle uh, an animal that's impeding or about, sorry, about to die. A cat brag is wondering why do they circle? Well, that is how they utilize the warm thermals. So the air goes up. Oh, have you got some? There we go. So there we go. You've got them circling there. So what happens is they're looking for hot air that's rising, and they'll ride those thermals right up to thousands of feet. They can fly at the same height as a jumbo jet, and. Uh, then they can have a very good view from way up there and they'll just use the winds up there. So they use the thermals to get up because if they had to flap to get that high, it would be near impossible for them to reach the heights they do. So that's why vultures circle. But don't worry, we will be back at this carcass come this evening to see what has changed, whether we're going to get lions, leopards, hyenas, we're going to have to wait and see. So from all of us, it's Fari Live. Toodaloo, goodbye, and see you in a few short hours.